That's right. That's right. And 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 about free will, I like. So, so, so I'm, I'm gonna let you talk. I'm gonna talk. Make it part. Jesus loves you, man. I don't know why you're so angry. Do you know God? God can deliver the anger that you have in you. He can deliver that anger. He wants to save you and set you free. What? Pe people need a savior. Many people no, want to hear, no, you're stopping the word of God. Why are you stopping the word of God? Why are you stopping the word of God? We're preaching the word of God. Word We're of showing God? love. Why are you showing so much anger? Why there's so much hate? Where's the love? You want to, God wants to enter into your house. Let me talk at some you point? Talk? Go ahead. You got something to say? No, no, no. I'll hold the mic. Oh, I'll hold yeah, the mic. I'll hold the mic. Give me the mic, No, man. no, no. Oh, yes. No, you're not going to hold the mic. Oh, yes. You're not going to hold the mic. The demons, oh, are yes, demons are manifesting. Demons are manifesting. You want me to speak? Yeah, I'm gonna handle the mic. No, you're not gonna handle no. the mic. Yes, I you're gonna will. Handle the mic. He'll let you have it. You, if, you. If, if you want to say, no, you can't be disrespectful. See, I oh, can't let you speak. Me. You're disrespectful like that. F this and F that and everything is cussing and then you want to speak. Is it, is it, you, I may, may God save yeah, you. May you God were. help you. I would. Oh, yeah. As we were this saying that. We, know, we all need a savior and you know this is a perfect example of how we need a savior a lot of people have anger anger in us and we need deliverance am I an example? even if you don't know me you're an example you're an example you came here cussing you came here cussing you're angry I, I don't need to know you I just you, out of the, the heart out of the mouth comes what's in the heart out of the mouth comes the abundance of what's in the heart and it's are anger, but God can set you free. Are you able or okay? Shut the fuck up. Are you able or okay? It's, it's unfortunate. God wants to save us and deliver us from our sins. We all have sin. And this shows the anger that many people have. Especially when it comes to the Word of God. When people don't want to hear the Word of God. When people are manifesting. This is spirits that are manifesting. Manifesting against the Word of God. You know, people don't mind if I was playing music here, if I was playing a guitar, I was making music, even if I was cussing, it would be acceptable. If I was cussing, if I was swearing, if I was out here rapping and I was cussing and swearing, there'd be no problem. But you bring the word of God and spirit starts to manifest, people are getting angry. This is because we need a savior. And the enemy is upset, the devil's angry. But we just want to encourage everyone that we need a savior. We need deliverance. I was in this world. I was living in this world. I was living for myself. I was pleasing myself. I needed a savior. And Jesus Christ came and saved me. Jesus Christ came and set me free. He set me free from anger. I had anger like the same way how she has anger. Jesus Christ is probably the Antichrist. Fuck Jesus Christ! Uh, uh, Pray Satan, uh, everyone! Yeah, right. That's what no, I wanted it's to not do. Right. You're going to pay for that. Yeah. No, I'm not. So, there you go. She's, she's giving glory to the devil. She's giving glory to the devil and she's proud of it. The devils I have inside of me. Yeah. We can deliver you, you right now. Them? Let's go. Let's go. Let's Jesus, go. Jesus can deliver you. You go on Ouija board and shit. If you want the demons to come out, we can cast them out. Jesus can deliver you. Go on. Amen. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. For you the spirit, to exercise me. Spirits are, spirits are manifested. In the mighty name of Jesus. We bind every spirit that is. We bind you around you, you powerless. No weapon formed against the body of Christ shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you is cast down. In the mighty name of Jesus, we destroy every assignment. And this lady right now, we destroy every demonic works. We render it powerless in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. That's exactly where the demons are going. Hell. So if you want to be free, Humble yourself and we can pray for you. This yeah. is a lot of talking for yes. okay. you. Yeah. Wanna, okay. Yeah. No, no, she's, no, she's yeah. missing it. Do you want to be free? Okay. I am already free. No. You're free? You are not free. Look okay. at well, listen. Oh, I 
Yo, look you at your cell. It's this okay. So do you want to be free? You want to be free? No, no, you're not free. Yes, no, no, you're not free. Listen. No, I'm not listening to you. I am already free. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Why? Christ. Everyone, silence yourself. Wicked do spirits. I look like someone who needs wicked to be spirits. Exercised. I bind you right now. I do not need to be exercised, you fucking son of a bitch. Wicked spirits. I bind you yeah, right now. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I bind yeah, you right, right. now. Just Jesus because you name. have a mic. No, no, no. You have a mic. Not happening. Hey, leave you up. will not. Get in Jesus you name. will in not Jesus get name. over me for a fucking in Jesus mighty name no, this is I bind me. every one of you I'm telling you you are holding on to these do demons I look and if you like want to be set exorcism? free if you want to be set free do I look like an exorcism if you want to be free do don't, don't touch our stuff don't touch do our stuff I look like an exorcism you're drunk you talk about them hey you talk about them if you want to be set free, we can help you. If you don't want to be set free, we're not here to help you. We're not here to help you if you don't want to be set free. Oh, because you are the savior. Kanye West kind of. You see, there's... there's... You see, there's a woman that has many demons in her life. Hallelujah. And she doesn't want to be set free. You cannot help anybody that doesn't want to be set free. If you love your demons, you can keep your demons. If you want to go to hell, you can go to hell. God is not forcing anybody to be saved. You see, the thing is, the people that came to Jesus and got set free, there was something inside of them saying, I need help. If you want help, we can help you. We can set you free. But if you got demons in your life right now, like this woman that smells like alcohol, cursing the preachers and saying, hail Satan. If you love Satan that much, have Satan. If you want hell, keep hell. If you want demons, keep demons. You, you see, something must be wrong with this lady. Something must be wrong. Because when the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ affects you so much, that you cannot even stand the name of Jesus, then you know that what we are doing and preaching is powerful. It's agitating demons. They always show up when Jesus Christ is preached. And that's why we preach. You're seeing in front of your face someone possessed with demons that doesn't want to be set free. Now, the future for somebody that wants to keep their demons is hell. It's destruction. And that's what's going to happen to this world. If you are here today living with demons, praising the devil, living in drunkenness, living in sin, if you continue in this path, you're going to end up crazy. You're going to end up in the psych ward. And you're going to end up in hell. But if you're here today and you're saying, I, got, I, I have a problem, I need help, I need deliverance, if that's you, you can be set free. You can be set free whoever you are, rich or poor. God is reaching out to you. God is calling you. God is asking you, do you want to be saved, whoever you are? Do you want Jesus? Do you know why you need Jesus? is because when you are in bondage, when, it's okay, it's okay, God is calling her, you, God wants you to hear this. You see, when you're in bondage, you need to get freedom somehow. You need to look somewhere. You know, sometimes people go to the, the doctor and argue with the doctor, but they need the medication sooner or later. Sometimes people go to the bar, they're looking for help. You wouldn't be here if you weren't looking for something. It's just you don't want to humble yourself. I want to let you know that God loves you, whoever you are. There's something inside of you that was made in the image of God, but you allowed the devil access to your life. And that's why you're struggling. That's why you're wrestling. That's why you're fighting the wrong person. You're fighting the wrong person. And you're trying to shut up the wrong person.
the voice of God is reaching out to you. He's knocking at the door of your heart. And he says, I stand at the door and knock, and whoever hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Do you know that there's, God is knocking at the door of every one of your hearts. Doesn't matter what your religion is. You can be Muslim. This is a jinn. There's a jinn inside of somebody. You could be Muslim. You could be Hindu. You could be Christian. It doesn't matter what your religion is. God is knocking at the door of your heart. He wants you to worship the one true living God. He wants you to come back into a relationship with Him, whoever you are. But some people will fight. Some people will even try to silence the preacher. Is this not what happened in the past? They stoned the prophets. They killed the prophets. They threw away the Bibles. They threw away the Holy Scriptures. But guess what? God keeps a certain amount of people here as a reminder that God still exists and God still loves you. I want you young people to know, everybody here to know that God loves you. He loves you so much that He's willing to send Jesus Christ to die for you. Now you might not understand that, but I'm going to explain that. Suffering on behalf of somebody else demonstrates love. When your mother suffers on your behalf, it's because she loves you. When your father goes to work long hours just for you, it's because he loves you. When the prophets came and were stoned and were crucified and killed for you, it's because they love you. And when God Himself is willing to knock on the door of your heart and to go the extra mile to even send His Son to die on the cross for you, it's because He loves you. It's all about love. And it's this love that God is asking you, do you want to receive inside of your life? And it's an option. You don't have to accept God in your life. You can live your own life, and I guarantee you, a life without God is a life of misery. It's a life of confusion. It's a life without purpose. It's a life without meaning. It's a life chasing after the wind, chasing after vanity, looking for hope in all the wrong places. That's what life without God looks like. But life with God is life with purpose, life with meaning, life with joy, life with peace, life with hope. And God wants to give you hope. If you've messed up today, how many of you have messed up at any point in your life? Put up your hand. You, you sinned, you did something wrong. This guy's Mr. Perfect. Hey, you, you've done something wrong. Yeah, some of y'all looked at the wrong things. I've done that. I, I, I've been in the wrong places. I've been there. But guess what? You know what that did to me? It didn't bring me any better uh, to a better place. It didn't give me peace. It gave me shame. It gave me feelings of, of, of corruption on the inside. Guess who can, guess who can fix that? Jesus can fix that. God can fix that. God is saying, look, I can come into your life and heal your broken heart. I can give you peace. I can forgive you. I can call you into my glory and I can do something inside of you that nothing else can. God wants to come into your life and give you the love that you've been looking for. Now, I want to I, I, I wanna ask you guys something here today. If you're listening, I know you're here and you're seeing a, a crazy lady, you're seeing a demon manifest through a person. But Jesus Christ, God, Yeshua HaMashiach is knocking at the door of your heart. And if you could hear with your heart, your spiritual heart, and say, you know what? I'm not going to deny God like this lady. That's what it looks like. That's what someone denying God looks like. Someone who wants to live in sin looks exactly like that woman. I believe God allowed that just for you to see what you look like. You look like that woman every time a preacher's preaching and you walk on by, you look like that woman. Every time you curse the preaching, you're, you're looking at that woman who's cursing the preacher. Every time you're saying, Hail Satan, this lady's saying, Hail Satan. Every time you walk by a church, every time you put down the Bible, every time you say, I don't need God, you might as well say, say Hail Satan too. You're a Satanist just like she is. She is a reflection of a lot of you here. Not everybody, but a lot of you. And that's why God is saying to you today, look, look with your own eyes what you look like in my eyes. You are a sinner, you are a rebellious person, and you are going straight to hell if you continue in that path. Now I'm here to tell you there's hope. You don't have to remain in that state. You don't have to go that route. You don't have to be possessed. You don't have to go down to the wrong places. You can be saved today. And if there's anybody here today that's saying, you know what, that's me. I need Jesus. I want to be saved. I need the hope of God in my life. If that's you, I just want you to raise your hand and say, yes, I need forgiveness. Amen. There's one, there's two. Amen. There's three, there's four. 
Hallelujah. Anybody, any, anybody else here today saying, you know, I need God in my life. I'm not going to deny God like that woman. I'm not going to go against the things of God like that woman. I'm not going to walk past this preacher and reject the message like that woman. But I'm going to say, you know what? I need Jesus. I need God. I'm not going to be one of those, those blasphemers. I'm not going to be one of those hypocrites. I'm not going to be one of those people that say, you know, I'm good without God. I know I need God. How many of you here today can put up your hands and say, I need God? Amen. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Very simple. Very simple. If you need God in your life, you need to be humble and say, yes, God, I need your mercy. I need your love. And I receive your love. Now I'm going to pray a prayer for anybody here that's saying, I want to receive the love of God. And I need God in my life. And it's as genuine as you want it to be. If you truly believe that you need the mercy and forgiveness and love of God in your life, you, you just helped my preaching. Thank you. Thank you. You, you get, thank you. God bless you. Even, the, even God uses the devil. God uses the devil to achieve his purposes. All of these people want to accept Jesus because of you. Thank you. We're going to say a prayer. We're going to say a prayer today. Thank you, devil. Thank you. I praise God. All things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to His purpose. You know you're touching me, right? Yes. You know I could knock you out. I could really knock you out. I would have a right by law to knock you out for you touching me. You know that, right? No, but I'm not. I forgive you. I forgive you. You know why I forgive you? Because all you're doing is helping the gospel be preached. Amen. So we're going to pray a prayer. For all those, raise your hands for those of you that are saying, I need God, I need the mercy of God, I need the forgiveness of God. Amen. Thank, thank you, devils. Thank you, devils, for helping me preach the gospel. Pray this prayer with me, okay? Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are one true God. I believe in you. And I thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I accept your mercy. I accept what Jesus Christ did for me. I come to you today. I humble myself to you today. And I welcome you in my life. Thank you, God, for coming in my life. Thank you for your forgiveness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How many of you prayed that prayer honestly? I, I, I don't care. I'm not, I'm not, it's not about, okay, a few of you. Amen. A few of you. It's okay. Some of you don't even know you need to still study. We got some tracks here. Uh, can, if you guys can go around and anytime, you know, give them some tracks so you know. We have church tomorrow. Church tomorrow. And um, it's going to be a powerful day for those of you that want to come. It's very close. It's very possible. Thanks to the devils. Thanks to the, this devil that was used actually by God to bring people to God. Hallelujah. Actually, thanks to God. Hallelujah. God is good. God is great. There's nothing that can take us away from the power of God. When the will of God is for someone to get saved, it doesn't matter how many devils show up. It doesn't matter how many crazy people come. God is going to accomplish His purpose. So if you're here walking down the road wondering about what we're preaching, we're preaching about Jesus Christ and Him crucified, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one who is coming again to judge the living and the dead. And if you are here today living in your sin, your sin will find you out. Your sin will bring your own condemnation. Your own behavior will destroy you. There is a right way and a wrong way. There is a narrow road and a broad road. And many go the broad road. Every year, every day, people are walking around thinking that the more sex they have, the more better they will be. But the reality is the sex doesn't last. The porn doesn't last. The ejaculation doesn't last. The orgasm doesn't last. All it leaves you is with an empty spirit and an empty conscience, especially if it's done wrong. When we do the wrong things, it leaves us with emptiness. It leaves us in a deluded state. But God is saying there is a better way. I got a way that will leave you with peace. Peace and joy unspeakable and full of glory. And that is by getting saved. That is by receiving the blood of Jesus Christ. That is by receiving the power of the Holy Ghost. That is by getting born again. Being born again. It is an encounter with the living God. You need to encounter the living God. Have an experience with God. You can't be the same 
every single day walking in the same vain lifestyle and think that there's nothing better. There is something better. It is God. And when you get God inside of your life, you will know that God is in your life because your eyes will be open to the truth. You will have joy that you never had before. You will have peace that you never had before. You will have power that you never had before. All because you encountered the living God. Hallelujah. You've encountered the living God. The living God. The reason why I call him a living God because he's a life-giving God. He's the one that gave life. He's the all-powerful. God bless you, sister. God bless you. God is the one that can wake you up again. He's the one that can raise the dead. He's the one that can heal the sick. He's the one that can open the eyes of the blind. Guess who did that? Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. No other prophet opened the eyes of the blind. No other prophet rose the dead. No other prophet walked on the water. No other prophet calmed the winds and the waves. But there is one man that did it. His name was Jesus. Yeshua, the one we call Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he's coming again. He's coming again. Uh, you know, the more that we live in history, look what happened over the last three years with all these vaccinations.